Hi, uh, we want to talk about the section five, the last section for chapter five in Savage book. Uh, it's a very short section, but you want to go through it. So it's uh, talking about the general debugging and technique. So previous section, we talked about the stops and the drivers and te test cases that you would create and test those uh, things. So uh, you, we develop a program, a full version of the program. We're going to have some test engineers at the end of the program. We give them some test cases and they're going to be testing, 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 and try to find things. I mean, uh, people think that uh, if they be a test engineer for a gaming company, it's going to be a lot of fun just playing games. But when you start debugging or finding problems, it's not playing game anymore. It's just looking for box. And that's what the test cases come along. That's what uh, we have some testing. So we do the testing in my level, in uh, my functions, and then my group, and then the whole project. And of course, we can take it to the customer. So we do a testing, alpha testing in our site, and then we do beta testing in customer side to be sure they're going to be okay with what we have. So we're talking about open mind. I think it's coming in from experience as, as you're doing your program and you're debugging, you get these ideas that, okay, where we can find for the bug, uh, uh, what's the problem and where we can find it. This is what we do generally when we are stressed out and we are getting close to the deadline. And I have seen this a lot in industry and I have seen it a lot in my, uh, for my students. So we're getting close to the submission time uh, and then uh, we go in the code and it's not working. We just go in there and I start changing stuff. <clears throat> and a lot of times we mess it up more than we can fix it. So first thing is don't wait for last minute. Second, just a step back, let's think about it. So uh, this will work for some small programs, but when it's getting bigger and bigger, it's not gonna work. It's just gonna mess it up more than it's fixing it. And sometimes you wanna show the program to someone else. Definitely that should not be your first thing. First, you have to try to debug it yourself. If you try it and it doesn't work for me, when I am looking at it, looking at it, and I cannot do it, I get up, walk around the block, just take a break and come back. That has been working for me. And showing it to somebody, somebody passed by, say, hey, you're missing this little thing over here. And I'm looking at it, looking at it, I couldn't find it. So having a, another set of eyes is good, but you got to do your part. You got to do, you know, the, the, the people are not just there to fix your problem. You're gonna try your best to do yours. And if it doesn't happen, then you go show it to somebody else. Some of the common common mistakes that we do, uh, local versus reference parameter. So which one is called by value, which one is called by reference. We don't have to do all of them by reference. We don't have to do all of them by value, whatever we need. So if I miss that and percent, maybe that can cause me the problem. Uh, equal versus equal, equal. So that is a common mistake that I have seen many, many times, especially in industry. Uh, another one is the integer divided by integer. That is another common mistake that we do. So we have one over three and we're expecting a 33%, but we get zero. So those are some of the things comes with the experience and you just can make a list of it and try it out first and then. So one way of fixing these things, uh, we have an old fashioned way and a new way of doing it. Old fashioned way, we didn't have all these IDEs the way that you guys have it right now. So we would write some C out, beginning of the program, end of the program, middle of the program. So let's say uh, my huge program would be divided in five sections and then I put one C out at the beginning, one C out at the end, and three somewhere else. 
I'm looking for a place that I have endless loop because my program doesn't end. Then when I, let's say I put one, two, three, four, five, and I see that the one executes, two executes, but three doesn't execute. So I know the problem is between two and three. So I narrow it down, I narrow it down, I narrow it down till I find where the problem is. So that's one way of doing it. So we are looking at this. So we are gonna be checking the stuff in there and <clears throat> narrowing it down. We put a bunch of uh, C out uh, around it uh, to see what the problem is. <clears throat> So we can uh, see that uh, we have uh, five divided by nine here. That's going to give me a zero, and that can cause the issue here. So one way of understanding this is we could take this one, break it down to pieces, and test each piece and find out where the problem is. The other one is using a debugger that's available to the most of the IDEs. You have that debugger. I am using C Lion right now. Uh, the one that I was uh, using before was Eclipse. Uh, that's the one I was using for a long time. I'm just using C Lion right now. So let me show you how things happen in the regular IDE. So you can put and put you can put a breakpoint in there. So when you put the breakpoint, you can do as many as you want. So your program is going to run in the debug mode. It's going to run up to the point that you have a breakpoint. It's going to show you all the variables that's available up to that breakpoint. Now from that point on, you have the option to run to the next breakpoint or go to individual line. So when you're going to individual line, you're going to hit some kind of a function call per se. So in here, I have a function call. So when I get to the function call or I get to a loop, I have an option to go inside of it or just go over it. So let's say that I get to this while loop, but uh, I decide I don't want to go inside of it. I can jump over it or I get to this uh, function. I can go inside of it. So I am tracking my variables to see what's going on. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to run with the debug. So it's going to run and it's going to stop at my first flag. But it's a stop at my first flag is going to show me all the variables available up to this point. So you can see my total amount is zero. My item number is 85 for some reason. My coin is one, uh, and coin value and so on and so forth. So all of those variables are gonna be here. Now here I have a menu in this area that's gonna let me do some stuff. So in here, uh, I have uh, my menu of doing stuff. So I can go, I can go, this is the, showing the execution point. So I can see my execution point. Uh, this is saying that step over, that's F8. I can use my uh, keypad. So uh, that means if I am, so, I, I am calling a function here that's called item menu. So I can go inside of it or I can go over it. So if I click go into it, this, this one is a step into it, it's gonna go into that function. I can also force it to go in there. So if let's say I have a while that is looking for, this while is looking for X, and I don't have an X, I'm gonna to force to go in there no matter what, even if the condition is not correct. Uh, then I can step out. So I'm in the middle of a loop or somewhere, I can just step out, or I can go to the next one. 
So if I click on this one, it's going to run from here to here. So that's uh, that's what the debugging tool is. And you can practice on it if you want to see how it's going to work out for you. Another thing that's available is uh, the, it's called assert. Assert is you put it somewhere and if that happens, your program is gonna terminate. Uh, it's not my favorite thing to do because I generally get this idea that my program should not terminate as much as possible. I mean, there's something that terribly wrong then we cannot do anything, then we can get out of it. So uh, in this case, for example, uh, we have, uh, let me make sure I have this one done. Okay, so we have uh, this answer over here and we have this function that we are uh, looking at. And then, um, uh, so in here, we have this condition that if n greater than zero and the num iteration greater than zero, we just gonna accept, meaning that if this condition happen, we are just gonna close the program, we're gonna get out. So that's what the assert is. If this condition is true, we're gonna get out. So that's just the testing. I never used it in my whole industry work and I'm not very fond of doing that, but sometimes you don't have a choice. That's what you wanna do. Uh, so you have lots of lots of program running and you just wanna find something and get out. So if that condition is correct, I'm just gonna terminate get out so I can go back and fix it. Okay, and this activity 5.5, you can be ready to talk about it in class and it may show up on your next test also. So be sure you practice on these things.